on this Wednesday the Old Testament reading that's given to us at the Eucharist includes these verses from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, They have found pardon in the wilderness, those who have survived the sword. Israel is marching to his rest. The Lord has appeared to him from afar. I have loved you with an everlasting love, so I am constant in my affection for you. Shout with joy for Jacob. Hail the chief of nations. Proclaim, praise, shout. The Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. And in the Gospel reading from Matthew, we have this incident in Jesus' ministry. There came a Canaanite woman who started shouting, Sir, son of David, take pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But Jesus answered her not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him, Give her what she wants, they said, because she is shouting after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. She retorted, ah, yes, sir, but even house dogs can eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. You've probably heard me say many times that Jeremiah is my favourite prophet. Perhaps you think of him as the prophet of doom and gloom, always speaking of terrible things that are about to happen to even to God's people and even to himself. But in fact, Jeremiah is a prophet who speaks of the presence of God in our troubles, of the presence of God with us when we are at the depth, in the depths of despair, the presence of God in suffering, not to get us out of suffering, the presence of God with us there. And so he speaks of the sufferings of the people of Israel uh, and of those who serve the Lord, who are striving to be close to God in righteousness and holiness. He speaks of their suffering as bringing them close to God. Jesus too, in his teaching of, of people, wanted to draw their attention to the fact that people had taken themselves away from God and God wanted to bring them back to himself. So the story of the Syrophoenician woman uh, is, is sometimes presented as if it were an example of how hard one had to try to get Jesus to, 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 to minister to people. But in fact, it's, it's quite the other way around, isn't it? Jesus is looking for uh, an acknowledgement from the Syrophoenician woman that she realises that people are divided, are far away from each other and so from God and need to be brought near to God, need to be brought near to God, near to God in humility and service. So he speaks of people as dogs, but not as in a scornful uh, way, but he speaks of the little puppy dogs. Uh, and the woman takes up that, that theme and says, yes, uh, I'll gladly be a puppy dog in God's house because I can eat the, the scraps that fall from his table. So we have the, the, the teaching that, that gives us the assurance that God is with us in trouble and that God wants to be with us in all that we are we are troubled about and in all that, that that we think is taking us away from him putting up barriers between him and us but in fact is bringing us closer to him closer to him in the sufferings which he typified for us in the sufferings of the incarnate Messiah Jesus of Nazareth however far away from each other we seem to be we are all united in God's love. That was something that a young man back in ancient Britain in the early 7th century, in fact, had to learn. Uh, his name was Oswald and he was the son, the son and heir of the King of Northumberland. But he, young and inexperienced, when his father died, he couldn't take hold of the kingdom, which was seized by a neighbouring king and Oswald was forced into exile. 
uh, he went off into Scotland. No uh, national boundary to cross in those days, of course. He went into Scotland and found himself eventually at Iona, where, under the influence of the monks, he became a Christian. When the usurping king back in uh, Northumbria died, Oswald decided that he would return and take hold of his kingdom, and he took uh, with him monks from Iona so to teach his people the Christian faith as he had learned it from them. The bishop who led them was a pretty doer character, uh, dare I say a typical Scot, and it wasn't long before he got fed up with the whole enterprise and went back to, to, Scot to Scotland, to Iona. But there, uh, a young monk who had, uh, who, who had helped to, to teach uh, Oswald uh, was so moved by the thought of, of, of teaching the Christian faith to the people of Northumbria that he took his place, went back to, to, went to Northumbria and took the ancient bishop's place as the leader of Oswald's team of, of missionaries, if you like. His name was Aidan. He was a, a gentle soul, uh, full of the, uh, the, the love of God uh, and very fond of, of Oswald. And up and down Northumbria he went, preaching without fear the, the, the truth about Jesus, the Christian faith, and baptising people into that faith. In fact, uh, it wasn't long before Oswald was more or less his, his acolyte supporting with, uh, with, with administrative uh, tasks and so on, Aidan's mission to the whole of Northumbria. Aidan and his monks became so, uh, so important that uh, Oswald eventually gave them the island of Lindisfarne as their monastic headquarters and the, uh, the, the, that has been the centre of, uh, of, of, of spiritual activity uh, and in fact the centre of, of church organisation, a centre of church organisation for centuries afterwards. Oswald uh, went on as king of Northumbria then, but uh, he, although he was king of, a, of what had become the first Christian kingdom in, in what was to become England, it wasn't a very peaceful kingdom. It certainly wasn't a very peaceful time. And in battle with King Pender of Mercia, Oswald was killed in the year 642. Pender was a, a pagan, Oswald was a Christian, and so the church, more than just kindly, I think, has regarded Oswald, a Christian dying in battle against a pagan, as a martyr. But there we have the story of the, of the saint whom we are commemorating today. Yes, the church counts him as a martyr and the 5th of August as his saint's day. So the, the love of God, the power of God in his in, in his love to bring the kingdoms of this world to serve him and to be part of the eternal kingdom of his love uh, is shown for us in Old and New Testaments and in the history of our own land. Like Oswald, like the Syrophoenician women, like the ancient Jews of Jeremiah's time suffering destruction and exile, we are called to know God in all the circumstances of our lives and of the world around us and to allow God's love to lead us into the joy that will bring us to his eternal kingdom. Let's ask him to bless us as we go upon that journey in our own lives. Lord God be with us. Lord God be with us as we serve you in our country, in our personal lives and in whatever service we can be to you and your kingdom here so that we may come to serve you forever in the glories of that eternal kingdom. We ask this as we glorify your name in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.